one of the regulatory requirements for all derivative trades that take place whether it's in the listed exchanges or whether it's in the otc market is a concept called as mark to market a very happy day to all of you and welcome to my youtube channel i am a learning partner sushila hari harad in this module we're going to take a detailed look as to what does mtm mean mtm is the abbreviation or the short form for mark to market we will also have a look at why mtm is done what is the regulatory need for having a mtm process being conducted on a daily basis and finally we'll take a look at the mtm process which is defined by the regulators in different countries so for example in india we have sebi which has uh, defined the regulation for mark to market of listed derivatives in usa we have the sec which has defined the regulation and the process for mtm in the united states markets mark to market was already being practiced since 1998 but the 2008 global financial crisis brought out the reality of how incoherent and how uh, varying was the mark to market process implying that every bank did its own methodology of marking to market this is when the re regulator stepped in and said that they will decide the regulatory environment in which the contracts have to be marked to market so the 2008 global financial crisis did not reflect uh, did not reflect the reality of the valuation of those contracts especially contracts like mbss that's the mortgage backed securities which were valued as per the investment bankers decision because of which when the books of accounts were studied post the crisis it was difficult to comprehend what was the exact quantum of loss that investment bank suffered because of the failure to mark to market on a standardized format mark to market is a daily reevaluation of a security over here we will include the term security for adding on foreign exchange equities bonds and even commodities in fact we can say this is a daily revaluation of a trading position that means if the bank has bought a particular security then the long position undergoes a reevaluation or if the bank has sold a security it means that the short position undergoes a reevaluation so trading positions of the banks reflect the current market value it reflects the current market value as opposed to the historical cost value now trading positions are completely driven by prices prices are very volatile if you look at asset prices you look at instrument prices the prices change every second no not every second it changes in fact every millisecond because of this continuous changes in the prices the bank's treasury division is exposed to a significant high amount of volatility caused because of change in prices on the trading positions now look what is a bank's main job a bank's main job is to accept deposits and give loans when they accept deposits from the people there is a certain amount of confidence and trust that depositors have in the bank and that's why they keep their deposits with the bank the bank cannot use this money of depositors to simply recklessly trade away in the uh, markets of foreign exchange or money markets okay because the prices being very volatile the positions could turn from profit into loss at the fraction of a second the loss could magnify two times three times within a trading day and that could result into a loss of money for the bank and also a loss of trust faith and confidence that depositors have with the bank therefore regulators say please know what is the risk of the trading position that the bank has hence do a current market valuation 
rather than the historical cost valuation of the trading position every day all market participants called as sto's that is securities trading organizations have to value the outstanding trading positions this is a notional valuation it's very clear if the position is outstanding whether it's a long position or a short position in a particular instrument in a particular asset class it is valued at the daily settlement price this is a notional valuation it results into unrealized profits or unrealized losses if there is no outstanding position that means if the position is settled then there is no need for mark to market so this is a trick question i always like to ask candidates especially from ib ops right so a investment bank has settled its position they bought in the morning they sold in the evening a particular asset class their trading position is zero in that particular asset class does the trading position position have to undergo a mtm okay many many candidates actually give differing answers for this but the truth is if their position is settled there is no exposure by the bank any more to that position and therefore there is no need to do a mark to market therefore a mark to market process is an end of day activity not an intraday activity this notional valuation of outstanding trading positions results into unrealized profits or unrealized losses by this activities traders back office middle office risk controllers will know what is the market risk that the bank is exposed to and therefore the next day when they get up in the morning and they come to the offices to their trading desks to start trading they have a hang and a complete understanding of what is the exposure of the bank we will now take a look at why mark to market is done mark to market is mandatory in derivatives market if you look at the united states market sec there's a securities exchange commission which is the regulator of the capital markets along with the respective exchanges of cme cboe etc have formed a comprehensive paper which includes guidelines and regulations for how mark to market is done in the derivatives market in india the se bi that's the securities exchange board of india does this uh, regulatory guidelines for mark to market in the nsc and bse fno segment that's the futures and options segment similarly across the world the regulators of capital markets or money markets decide draft and implement the regulations required for managing exposure to both listed derivatives as well as otc derivatives mark to market is primarily needed for calculation of variation margin we know that in the futures market and in the options market traders play on leverage that means they have a 100% exposure to the security but they only pay for 15 to 20% of it the remaining 80% is leveraged so options and futures are highly leveraged trading positions and because they are leveraged trading positions at the time of deleveraging the outcome could be fatal it could result into a phenomenal amount of loss and therefore banks across the world are mandated to pay margin in the futures market by paying margin in the futures market and in the options market it prevents the traders from over trading typically what is our mentality when we have a loss making position the traders will may be you know, you know tempted to actually take a additional position in the same uh, security to average it out or something like that but mark to market controls the trader 
it prevents the trader from over exposing the bank to volatility in the securities markets this is a very strong and comprehensive risk control mechanism so mark to market is a regulatory requirement it's an internal risk control mechanism and it prevents traders from over trading we'll now take a look at what is the mark to market process as already explained the mark to market process is a comprehensive process defined by the regulator so what do exchanges do exchanges announce something called as the daily settlement price of all the securities that are traded what do we mean by daily settlement price daily settlement price is not the closing price many people again who come for interviews assume that daily settlement price is the closing price of the security no daily settlement price is calculated by the exchanges it is a weighted average of the trades of the last 15 minutes of trade and then it is announced on the exchange so even though trading gets over in india at 3:30 pm at 3:45 pm the exchange announces the daily settlement price of all the futures and options investment banks then use these daily settlement prices to value the outstanding position of their clients all outstanding contracts are then valued at this daily settlement price this dsp is the price at which the outstanding contracts have to be valued even if you have taken a trading position in the morning of that day the daily settlement price will be calculated to find out the notional profit or notional loss on that trading position at the end of that day the daily settlement price once implemented on the trading position results into a notional profit or a notional loss for example if you have bought a contract worth 1000 rupees in the morning by the end of the day it has become 900 rupees then as per the daily settlement price it is 900 rupees that means you have suffered a notional loss of 100 rupees okay so next day morning when you get up you will and start looking at the positions again when you re enter into the contract you will know that you already have a loss of 100 rupees on your mtm margin that is your mark to market margin this mtm process is very important to be administered on a continuous basis at the end of the day so traders know whether they have made a profit or a loss if the position is a loss then traders have to fund additional margin normally futures and options contracts are held for extremely short periods of time but if it is held for more than 4 to 5 days then variation margin calls could start kicking in and as a variation margin starts kicking in then it is a loss of interest expense for the trader so you have bought a trading uh, you have bought a contract at 1000 rupees it is closed at 900 rupees the, there is a deficiency of 100 rupees in your margin account the broker will start asking you for additional margin normally margin calls go to broker go to traders who have consistent losses in their mtm positions resulting into margin calculations going funny okay so this could result into a significant loss for the broker and therefore the brokers have to take care that their clients first put in enough amount of margin or else if there is consistent loss then the margin amount could be extremely high running into millions of dollars or crores of rupees for some of the larger institutional investors thank you very much for watching this channel if you have any queries please post in the comments box i need your feedback so that you can i can listen to you and get your comments about what additional topics that i can cover please hit the like button share the channel with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel thank you once again bye bye